Good morning one and all and welcome to the video. This video we are going to learn something really interesting. We have a small project here. We want to build a real-time uh, data pipeline essentially that can analyze click stream data. What do I mean by that? Basically whenever anyone clicks on a product or anything we want to develop a pipeline using a fire hose, those data would be dumped on S3 on a data lake. And after that, we run our glue crawler and we query the uh, essentially the click stream data using Athena. So in this video, I'm gonna go over theory and a practical lab, which has the code and everything step by step. So I'm very excited, but let's get started straight to action. All right. Before learning something, I believe that we all should be learning theory a lot. Uh, theory is important, so let, let, let's get started. Amazon Kinesis makes it easy to collect, process, and analyze real-time streaming data so you can get timely insights and react quickly uh, to the new information. Amazon Kinesis offers key capabilities to cost-effective process streaming data at any scale. Along with the flexibility to choose the tool, the best suit of requirement of your application. With Amazon Kinesis, you can ingest real-time data such as video, audio, application log, website, click stream, IoT, uh, telemetry data, and machine learning analytics and another applications. Amazon Kinesis enables uh, you to process the, uh, un enables you to process and analyze the data as it arrives and respond instant instantly instead of having to wait until all your data is collected before processing can begin. Benefits are real-time, fully managed, scalable. And as I said, I, I'm a fan of, you know, uh, keeping theory short and labs a little more. This is, uh, this, is this, uh, 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 this image I've taken from one of the plural site courses and uh, the author is Ivan Mustak. Uh, so here, essentially, uh, the user has the ability to read uh, data from, from, so consider this as a, as, as a kinesis, the way it stores data. When anyone wants to add data, you can only append it. You cannot insert it in between that, right? So that's the idea of the kinesis. I also have made some notes here. Records are only stored uh, for 24 hours. Um, by the way, uh, you could change the retention period. We'll talk about all that more, but these are some of my notes while I keep learning from different, different things, right? Uh, kinesis also has uh, the concepts of shards, which means uh, you could uh, the data could go into multiple shards, right? Just like Elasticsearch, we define shards, right? Here also we have shards. Uh, if you want, you could define shards. Uh, this is a small, you know, uh, again, uh, an image that I've taken from a Pluralsight course from the, uh, by, by the author Ivan. So he essentially says in that image, like the way, when you want to insert data, so uh, when you insert the data, Kinesis usually performs an MD5 on your key. And then based on that key, it inserts into uh, the required partitions. Right. So essentially, that's that. He also mentions that uh, you could read data from multiple um, shards as well at the same time. So Kinesis offers that. Three things that's important in Kinesis. There are three things. So we have a Kinesis data stream. You have a data fire host and data analytics. This video will cover uh, the practical of fire host. And in the upcoming videos, we'll do streams and analytics. What is data stream? I'll just cover in a short. So essentially, uh, stream is also a, like a queue service requ uh, requiring a consumer. The main difference is that it stores the received data for a set period, allowing the data to be fetched multiple times. The received information is available almost immediately and can be fetched from Kinesis stream at up to five, five times a second per shard. And this has been taken from one of the Motiversity blog. Uh, so the reference is given. So essentially, streams are nothing but uh, just a pipe to store data. You, you keep dumping your data and the consumer can read data from the pipe, as, as good as that. Firehose, on the other hand, uh, which is the next slide, Firehose is essentially, essentially when you t connect that pipe and you want to connect that pipe to a data store, like Redshift, Elasticsearch. So the, the, so the producer are spitting data into the pipe, right? Now you want to connect that pipe to somewhere, right? So for example, when uh, the water comes from uh, outside, right? So it's connected to a pipe, then that pipe gets distributed to everyone's building, right? So you're connecting the, the water to the building. Essentially, Firehose is just the same thing, connects the pipe and delivers the data into the destination, essentially. You can add lambdas and all that for uh, more filtering. If you want more uh, uh, processing, you could add lambda. So then once the data is uh, dumped on the data lake or S3, fire up an event, 
uh, essentially a lambda and you can process that. But uh, more, more coming in, Let, let's not go crazy on the theory. Uh, we also have Kinesis data analytics, uh, but I'm not gonna cover that. Uh, these are the reference, but now it's time for a demo, I promise, right? So let, let's get started. So we go to the dashboard, let's create a data stream. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't wanna create a data stream. Uh, so I wanna uh, essentially create a fire host. So uh, let, let's go here. So the way you would navigate this is uh, head, over, head over to uh, the Amazon and then click on delivery streams. We wanna create a, a fire host and not a, or not a stream. Uh, the, so the source is direct put because we're gonna directly insert data into this pipe for now. Destination, uh, you have a bunch of Redshift, um, Elasticsearch, uh, Datadog, uh, but for now Amazon S3 is, is great. Uh, leave all that to default, we'll select the destination, we'll, we'll browse, uh, we'll select my bucket, sawmill chart dev bucket. Uh, we'll do that and uh, we want to reduce the buffer size so we could see the data you know immediately i'm gonna make this as the buffer size as two megabytes and this as 100 uh, seconds uh, leave everything to default and create the stream at this point my stream is being created uh, my kinesis stream has been created uh, now you need an iam user so uh, it's easy i have covered this number of times uh, so essentially you'll go to iam uh, click on user and then you create a user. Meanwhile, my stream is being created. I can quickly show you that part as well. So you click on user, you click on add user, uh, give, give the necessary roles and permissions, okay? So we'll say my, my test, give the programmatic access next, add the admin for now. Uh, you could refine the access later on, copy the access and the secret key, you're good to go. Now your stream is ready, uh, go to the delivery stream um, essentially uh, I should have named something better. Uh, this is so so vague, but uh, it's been created. Now let's head over to the program and let me explain you what this does. First of all, define your access key, secret key, and the stream name. Uh, I should have given a really good name, uh, but it's fine for the demo, it's fine. So put three, whatever, uh, we could name it as click stream or something. So I've inserted my stream name, region, access key. We are inheriting over uh, uh, this class called Firehose. Essentially, it has a method called insert item. Uh, the, uh, we remove this one. It takes a JSON data. And, and remember, I have done some nice way. Because if you don't do this formatting, if you don't add the new line character, then Athena or the glue crawler won't be able to pick up your JSON files. Because when the Kinesis would dump, uh, when the Firehose will dump the data on S3, you need uh, the JSON to be separated on a new line. So then our glue will pick up from that, then you can add ETL and all of that. But for now, let's keep things simple. Uh, then I have one more simple function that I have copied from Amazon's website. Essentially, this is a fake, it, this generates a fake data. Uh, and I will try to show you uh, really quick. Let me put this one here. So what this does is uh, I'm gonna run for one of them and then I'll show you what the data is. So essentially, this generates a fake, I have to print it, my bad. So the code would be there, so don't worry. Let's focus on the learning aspect, as I said. So user ID, device ID, it generates a click data, essentially, a fake data, right? So let's assume that, right? So that's that. Now, what I wanna do, since my Kinesis Firehose is ready, this code is very important. The way you insert data in the Firehose is extremely important. If you don't format it, your glue is not gonna pick up uh, the stuff, okay? So at this point, my Firehose is ready, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pumping data into the Firehose. Uh, let's get rid of the partitions. I don't think I need partition. That was for the data streams. So at this point, as I said, this class does the job for you. So I'm gonna show you a demo now. So. Uh, this should insert about around 30 records on the Firehose right now. So one, so as you can see, the data is being pumped on the Firehose at this point. Okay, so we go to the Firehose now, uh, essentially we'll go here in the monitoring tab, we should be seeing uh, some uh, spikes or, or some sample points here in the graph. Uh, just wait for a couple of seconds, uh, it should show up uh, here. I'm gonna do one one more batch of 30 records here. And meanwhile, that's being done, let's hold it, hold, let's, Hover over to the S3 and see, uh, seems like the Firehose has created a folder called 2021. It follows a data lake format, year, month, year, month, day, hours, and then your file, essentially. So uh, let's uh, let's see here. I'm gonna refresh, the change this to one hour, uh, maybe refresh here. I should be seeing some data points here shortly. So let, let's, let's, let's wait, as I said. 
So uh, if you go now to the AWS S3 bucket, uh, as you can see year, month, you have, um, so again, I'm gonna repeat the structure. This is usually a month, then you have a day, and this is the hour, and essentially these are your files here uh, on the Firehose. So now if I download this, and I just wanna show you how the data looks like, and now your glue crawler can easily pick up data from here. At this point, if I click on open up on Notepad++, as you can see, these are the, all the click data that was pumped to, to, pumped to the Firehose, okay? So if you keep adding more and more data, the, the Firehose is gonna deliver files uh, into this uh, data lake, okay? So that's that. Now, what you wanna do is essentially, uh, I would head over to a service called Glue. Now, Glue is a service that allows you to run, um, that allows you to crawl over the data store. Data store. So I'm gonna say AWS Glue, and I'm, now I'm gonna create a crawler that's gonna crawl on my data store. So this is the crawler. I'm gonna click on crawler, and we'll say, Click data, we'll click on next, data store, crawl next. Uh, now over here, we'll uh, specify the path. So we'll say uh, here and we'll crawl over 2021 folder. Okay, so that's done, next. We don't wanna add any other stores. We'll choose a default uh, IAM role, which has the access we're gonna run on demand. Uh, the def this is gonna add uh, the table in the, in the default database. So we'll use the alias TBL underscore for prefix. Uh, click on next, finish. At this point, uh, your crawler is uh, created. Now let's run the crawler. Now, the, when you run the crawler, the crawler should populate the metadata at this point, which means now, once the table is created here, once the crawling is complete, you should be able to go to Athena and you should be able to query your data store. Before we move to Athena, we need to change the partition because I, I'll show you why. Just give me a couple of seconds. So um, as you can see, the, uh, the Firehose is working fine. We are getting response here. Now, at this point, I'm just waiting for the crawler to complete its crawling. So the crawler has begun, it's crawling on the data store, which is the S3. And now once it's crawled, it would create a table in, in, in the table section, and then we'll rename the partitions, and then we go to Athena and bam, magic. Once we do that, now from this point onwards, we can uh, easily make uh, um, charts, for example, visualization dashboards for the company using QuickSight, or we could put it to Redshift, for you know, for warehousing purposes or whatever you you are uh, trying to do, okay. So at this point, I'm just gonna I'm simply waiting because it's, it might take a couple of minutes at this point. So as you can see, one minute elapsed. Okay. And I strongly recommend, guys, if you want to learn thing, don't watch. Pause the video. Try it yourself. Okay. That's the way I learn. I, I, I never, I, I do watch videos and, and stuff on Stack Overflow. I, I do a lot of stuff, but I actually try. I put in the time. So my advice, if you want to get go, go, good with stuff, so uh, try, try it out. So at this point, the table is created. So let's click on this. And now at this point, we click on uh, edit schema. And here you can see, here we want to name this as month. This is my uh, day partition. And this is going to be my hours. Okay, we click on save. Now I'm heading over to Athena to query my clickstream data, which is being constantly being pumped onto uh, Kinesis uh, uh, and it's being dumped on the S3. So now what I do is I, I wanna go to Athena. Okay, so we go to Athena and now we can select the table and essentially uh, we select the catalog table uh, and that's the table. So first of all, we, we have to load the partition. So this command right here would load the partition here. Now, once that is done, now we could uh, click on preview table and this should essentially uh, give you all the clicks data. You could now download the data or you could dump, whenever you run any query, by default, all the data is dumped on S3 for, from Athena. So now essentially your data science team can grab that file and essentially uh, made a, make a machine learning model to predict essentially the clicks or, or, or that. You wanna see, okay, how many, uh, in an hour, how many clicks are coming on, what product they are clicking more, you know, all that fancy stuff you could do that. Uh, but now what you could also do is now if I head over to the Amazon S3 bucket, as you can see, uh, this uh, the Athena uh, essentially saves the result to, 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 to the bucket as well. So now your data science team can simply go crawl over all the files and essentially uh, you know, pick up and then make your machine learning model, use SageMaker notebooks or Zeppelin, whatever they're using. So the SageMaker notebook can directly read data from the um, Glue data catalog. So they can, you can provide a connection string and, and a table name, and directly you can do all the things in Python like Jupyter notebook in, in SageMaker, right? So that's it for uh, this video. I hope you have enjoyed uh, an amazing walkthrough of the entire uh, system, essentially how you can uh, process this click data how you can analyze it, how you know, 
so at least a high level overview on kinesis uh, then we used essentially glue s3 uh, and stuff but the entire code of this would be there in the description section below uh, right so you please feel free to download the code see what's going on how it's working try it out by yourself is what i would say uh, I have to, I have as I said I read a lot of articles I I, I, I took a course on plural side by Ivan then I, I also read a couple of blogs from which I, I learned my stuff and of course all the references are given from wherever I've taken the images so don't get crazy <laughs> but uh, yeah man I uh, just wanted to uh, uh, walk you over uh, you know essentially how to create pipeline using Firos and uh, analyze this data Next coming up, we are going to do something with cool with Elasticsearch. We're going to develop Firos pipeline. We will process the data and dump into the Elasticsearch and visualize using Kibana. It's going to be fun. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, so if you have any more questions, list your question in the comment section below. As usual, guys, keep smiling, keep programming, and I would see you guys next time.